Welcome back. After Gauteng Premier David Makura's State of the Province address, Garabo Litlatla caught up with the Finance MEC Barbara Creasy. Let's take a look. We will be announcing the provincial budget next week on Tuesday, and that is when I will be announcing the key allocations to all the departments. One of the things I said in my medium term budget policy statement in November last year is that health and education remain provincial priorities. I think we all know that infrastructure spending is also really important in terms of creating jobs and improving public facilities. So I suppose in some senses there won't be many surprises. MEC, largely because of what happened in the Gauteng province last year, um, or the year before rather, and the, the hearings that we've been hearing about uh, from last year about life for city many, there is a, a lot of emphasis that's put on health and the provision that will be made for that. But we also have to counter for the fact that uh, uh, some of the victims of the patients who, who have passed away from the life for city many crisis will also now be due for compensation. Please tell us how that will work. Well, as I said, the budget is next week, Tuesday. Um, but I think that you would know that we have had a political committee, it's an executive council subcommittee that's been working together with the Department of Health on improving the financial situation in that department. I will be giving an update to the public next week on Tuesday on uh, the work we have been doing and also how we hope that we will work together with health to settle the issue of accruals. MEC, uh, the Premier spoke about uh, the number, he spoke about 200 uh, FDI projects that have been in, in the province uh, since 2014. Surely you're looking as the hub, you're looking to up that number considering the amount of people that flock into the city and really putting a lot of uh, uh, strain on, on, on the education and the health uh, uh, department. Well, I think that economic recovery and the creation of an inclusive economy is one of the major priorities for this provincial government. And clearly uh, one of the, the issues that we've been working hard on is to open up markets in the rest of the African continent, but also to attract foreign direct investment. I think that clearly improved investor confidence, improved business confidence, bodes well for us. We've always been the primary destination for FDI in our country and I think we have great hope that it will improve going into the future. I know that your, your budget is mainly as a consequence of the national budget, of course, but last week we heard the finance minister announcing a one percentage point increase in value-added tax. Today I heard uh, the premier speaking about the fact that Gauteng must try and put more zero product, more zero uh, VAT-rated products onto that list. What is your feeling and is there any way in which you can engage national government with regards to this? Well, I think that we know that uh, as far as communities that live in poverty are concerned, most of their income is spent on basic foodstuffs, but it's also spent on issues such as transport, school uniforms for children. Uh, I think an, an area that's been of concern to women for many time, for many years, has been the issue of uh, sanitary products. Um, so obviously, um, national government would have to determine which products would be zero rated. I think that as a provincial government we would be looking at the impact on our people and then from there deciding what we would want to raise to the national minister through the, the budget forums that we hold on a regular basis with him. Uh, and I, I would imagine that issues such as transport um, would be something that we would really have to look into because clearly uh, one of the, the issues that impacts heavily on people's ability to look for work is the very, very high cost of, tra of public transport. Let me see when the Premier stands there and tells us his political hopes and his dreams, he's really putting a lot of pressure on you. And one of the moments that were noticeable, of course, was when he said, eat holes are clearly not working. Something that Gaudengas would probably agree with with regards to the, to, uh, uh, the Premier's utterances. How far are you in terms of your engagement with national government to talk about this particular program? 
Well, I suppose one of the things that's wonderful about this era is we now have renewed hope and we have greater energy to tackle old problems. And clearly, Premier has, has signaled that ETOLS is one of those problems, and we all agree as Kartengas that this situation is completely unworkable and we don't want them. Also commenting on the content of the state of the province address is ANC Provincial Secretary Hope Papo, who uh, spoke to CNBC Africa's Garabola Tatla also. Let's take a look. Provincial Secretary, allow me to say back to the first issue of life is it many. How do us want to know that you are going to take people to task, that there will be people responsible for the over 144 deaths of mental uh, uh, patients in life is it many. Gauteng government does not arrest people. The law enforcement agencies are investigating the cases. To expect that the Premier can be involved in arrests of people, it's, it's incorrect. The Premier, what he can do is to implement the decisions of arbitration. That arbitration was actually recommended by, by, by the health ombudsperson, which was done. So the Premier has reiterated that the law enforcement agencies must do their job. That's the most the Premier can do. We cannot instruct police to arrest people, for the NPA to prosecute people, but he has made a commitment that whatever is due to be done by the Houghton Provincial Government will be done. Something else that's been made a commitment is uh, youth unemployment, and this is not the first time we hear you know, of uh, initiatives to try and grow jobs in this province. Are you satisfied? Are the, the youth of Houghton satisfied with the level of efforts that they're seeing from their government? The Premier made it clear that our targets are always moving mm -hmm. because immigration is happening every day in our province. You can say you're going to build 5,000 houses, you wake up, you have to provide 10,000. So I think that must be taken into consideration. The issue of equitable share, yes, I mean, uh, TEPO 1 million. Mm -hmm. It's in all er fields, whether it's in technical fields, in ICT, in uh, public works programs, that is actually uh, happening and is going to ha continue happening. Obviously, I cannot speak on behalf of the youth of the province, but our, the government, which is led by the African National Congress, is committed to working with young people in all areas, in all fields, to actually create opportunities and permanent jobs. I think that it's, and you are aware that our economy has not been growing, mm -hmm. and how things contribution to the economy is always important. Mm -hmm. All of us, young people, old people, we must contribute. And it's important that you also deal with crime. Mm -hmm and the criminal justice system. The Premier in 2015 said, quarrels within the SAPS are creating problems in the fight against crime. We are now confident that with the stability which has been brought to the SAPS in the province, the stability which has been brought overall in the, in the criminal justice cluster will help us uh, to fight crime, working with the, with the law enforcement agencies. So well, that is where we leave it uh, for today. Of course, many say that there's even further stability that has been uh, brought to the police system with the entry or return of uh, Becky Taylor to the ministry there. But uh, we are leaving you with, as uh, the team here in South Africa is leaving you for now, uh, closing oh, Power Lunch, West Africa continues right after this short break. Thanks for watching.